Good morning, everybody. You are watching IDTV, and I'm so glad to be with you again this week. And I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of coconut oil. I was trying to decide what to do this um, this video on, and a friend of mine was like, oh, you should do coconut oil. So I was like, yeah, I guess I will. Then another friend of mine called me on the phone. He was like, hey, um, what can I do with this coconut oil? Somebody said this and somebody said that about this coconut oil. So I said, okay, I better do a video on, what's that? <gasps> coconut oil. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the top seven benefits or the top seven ways that I use coconut oil, okay? So um, first and foremost, I want to thank everybody that's been joining me on ITIDTV. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Also, I would like to thank everybody that is um, tuning in to Master Force Radio for the people that are on my team for health and fitness this um, 30 days of intention. Um, I hope this video can be helpful for you because um, anyway, I'll post it and I'll let you see. If any of you guys that are listening have not heard about what we're doing on 30 days of focus and intention, head over to Facebook, um, Facebook forward slash master force, and you'll be able to see our uh, information about the upcoming radio show and about our 30 day project of focus and intention. So, um, so anyway, without further ado, what can you do with coconut oil? So one of the first things that you could do, I'm going to demonstrate it because people ask me all the time, well, each and every, what do you mean? I'm going to go ahead and just break it down for you. You don't have to, you see that? That's about a, that's a good, I don't know. What is that? A teaspoon? Anyway, you see what this is. It's a teaspoon going in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hold on. I'll get that with a little bit of this chlorophyll. <laughs> Throw back a little chlorophyll. Y'all know I'm silly. Stop playing with me. So the first thing that you can do is you can eat it. You could literally just, you saw what I just did. You could just eat it. Many reasons why you would want to eat it. <clears throat> it's very good for your digestion. The medium chain fatty acids are good for your body in so many ways. I highly encourage you, do not take my word for it. You don't know me from a can of paint. Look it up. Go on the internet and Google the benefits of coconut oil. Google the benefits of eating coconut oil. And then see what it says. And then you tell me. Okay. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, oh, Icha, have you been, you know, working on your body? Have you been uh, getting inside of, you know, the weight release? They call it weight loss. I call it weight release. Because, you know, if you lose something, you're going to what? Find it. So people have been asking me about that conversation. One of the things that I do is um, eat coconut oil. It's really, really good for you. So, like I said, please do not take my word for it. Look it up on the interwebs. Okay. Uh, the second thing that you can do with the coconut oil is that you can cook with it. Um, you can put it just like the way that I just ate it. You can eat it. You can also take it and put it inside of your smoothies. So, if you are making a smoothie or a green juice or something like that in your blender, you can take it and put it inside of your smoothies, and it's really very good that way as well. Um, somebody said, can you fry in it? I prefer not to fry a lot of foods. Saute some stuff, yes, and still, yes. You can fry in it and saute in it. You can also, like, when it's uh, coconut oil is real cool because when it's room temperature of a certain degree, I think it, um, it melts at body temperature. So when it gets to your body temperature, which is 98.6, it melts. But at room temperature, it's solid. So you can also use this um, if you don't use butter. You can bake with this. Put it in the freezer first, and then you can utilize it in some of your recipes. You have to be a little, um, got to be quick with that. But anyway, 
like I said, just take this information that I'm giving you, let this be the springboard, and go start looking some of this stuff up because it's amazing. I love it. Um, the next thing that you can do with it is oil pulling. So the way that oil pulling works, just because of the, the structure of this video, I'm not going to do it right here, but I'm going to show you pretty much. What you do is just like I did before you get a whole um, tablespoon, you, you really want to heap it up a little bit more. You put it in your mouth. Like I said, it melts at body temperature. So when you get it in your mouth, you swish it around like mouthwash for at least 10 minutes. Set a timer. Do it for at least 10 minutes. It's called oil pulling. P-U-L-L-I-N-G. Look it up. It helps to reconnect. Like if your gums are receding, it helps your gums to come back and um, reattach to the teeth. It's an Ayurvedic principle. If you look it up, you are going to be amazed. It's so amazing. Also, those of us that have been working on any kind of natural healing, if you have any kind of pain or um, if you also have any kind of bacterial, different types of things going on in the mouth, doing the oil pulling every day. And then um, after you swish it around for 10 minutes, you um, um, spit it out and then you rinse your mouth with warm water. So just keep a, you know, a cup in your bathroom that you could refill with warm water and you rinse it up, rinse your mouth out. And I'm telling you, it's going to do wonders. Before you reach for something that's going to toxify your liver, like a pain reliever, start reaching for the food. Food is what actually could go in our bodies and be helpful for us. So I highly encourage you to do that. Alrighty. So the next thing on my list is toothpaste. My niece came over my house one day and she was looking at my bathroom. She said, Auntie, what's that? I told her it was my toothpaste. <laughs> she said, well, where's your other toothpaste? I said, I don't use that. So the other toothpaste, other toothpaste has fluoride in it. Um, please look up fluoride toxicity and yeah, do your own research. So here's my toothpaste. All right. So this is baking soda. So you, it's, um, it's real free form. You saw how much baking soda that was. You can work with it. All right. So then you take your coconut oil. All right. You see me putting that in there. So I'm just putting that in there. All right. So you got your coconut oil in there and you got your baking soda in there and you mush it up. If you've ever made biscuits, this is like the part where you cut the flour in with the dry ingredients. I mean, excuse me, you cut the fat in with the dry ingredients because that's what you're technically doing. All right. So then I have peppermint oil. Some of the other oils that are really awesome for this are clove oil. Clove oil is very healing to the um, to the mouth. It's also very good um, for releasing pain. If you look on Ambosol, what people normally get for a pain reliever for their teeth, Ambosol is made up of, um, Ambosol has clove oil in it. So it's really good. So you see what I'm doing? I'm mixing it up because everybody asks me this all the time. I put peppermint oil in it to my taste, which is probably about five or six um, good drops of peppermint oil. So I'm mushing up all of the coconut oil and you can mush up a little bit more coconut oil in there. For this amount of baking soda, this looks to me to be about, I would say from my professional chef opinion, about two cups. It's about two cups of baking soda. Okay, maybe, I don't know, cup my head, whatever. <laughs> so you, uh, so you mix it up like so. And got the peppermint oil in there. I promise you, I wish you could smell this. It smells delectable because I like peppermint. So I'm going to teach you something that's very good for your mouth. Yes, of course, you brush with it. So you would moisten your brush in your water, dip it in there, and then go on and get your brush on. What I like to do, though, honestly, when I'm using it, put some in a separate container so you don't contaminate all the rest of it because everybody got to use it. Mm, let's not. All right. So, anywho, you go ahead and you um, get your toothbrush in there and you do your brushing. 
Um, also, I would encourage you to do some research on how to brush because if you do an up and down, you really need to brush away from the gum, gum line very gently inside to, you know, there too. Make sure you get the back all up in there because, yeah, that's where that bacteria is. Your breath be stinking. That ain't cool. So then what you want to do is after you get it all mixed up, get it all mixed up. You can mix other things with this too. You can mix xylitol with it. Look that up. You can mix um, sea salt with it. You can also mix um, uh, what other spice do I like in there? Like cinnamon in there. But anyway, you can see that says peppermint. Throw that in your medicine cabinet and work with that. Okay, because this is what's going to keep your mouth on point. Also, another thing that I do is after I have eaten, even if I don't, even if I'm not going to brush my teeth, because for the abrasive nature of it, and check on the abrasive nature of baking soda. We have been taught that it's an abrasive to the enamel. Do your research and see if it's true. All right. So anywho, um, you take about this much of the baking soda and you put it in your mouth, right? That's a, like a heaping teaspoon. And this is after I eat. You chew it up. Do not swallow it. You chew it up. You chew it up and let it get inside of like all the crevices in your teeth and everywhere. Chew it up and then rinse again with your warm water. And I like to put even sometimes a drop of peppermint oil in my warm water to just really refresh the mouth. So just really rinsing and refreshing the mouth is really, really, is it's helpful because you don't want to over... Um, can you overbrush your teeth? I don't know. Did I just make that up? All right, whatever. All right, so the um the next thing that you can do with the coconut oil is oil cleansing. So I take the coconut oil and I massage it into my skin. And then I take um, some natural astringent. You could just mix some, um, some spring water with some apple cider vinegar in here. Um, you could also put like a teensy drop. You can make your own. Um, different types of astringents. You can put a teensy drop of peppermint oil, literally one drop, fill the rest with um, with uh, alkaline water or distilled water and use that and put it on uh, a cotton pad like that and use that to cleanse your face. I know that a lot of times as um, melanated women or women with oily skin, um, naturally oily skin, we have been taught that we why would you put oil on oily skin? All you got to do is Google oil cleansing and you will see what I'm talking about. So put the oil on your skin, massage it in and use a natural, um, a natural astringent to, um, to get it off. So um, number six would be body massage. So one of the ways that we really help to heal and nurture our body is through massaging all the parts of our body. And I do mean everywhere. It's very important to be clear that we have to become much more intimate with our bodies. We got to be willing to know what's what, how does it feel. We really need to be the authority on our bodies because it's our gift to take care of. So body massage, I utilize this in the morning to massage all of my big joints, elbows, shoulders, Elbows, shoulders, um, my knees and ankles and hip joints. And also um, just throughout the day, if I'm just sitting around, if I've been on the computer working, I'll massage my wrist and I'll, you know, get the, you know, this going. I'll take my jewelry off and massage my fingertips and circulate them. It's very important for us to really get intimate with our bodies and to massage everywhere. Also, I highly encourage women to massage your um, your decolletage, all of this area. Massage your um, <laughs> okay, I'm really feeling myself up. Massage your breasts and uh, massage your belly, and really, really rub your belly. Good for digestion. To just take it and just take time to really massage yourself. Massage all the areas under the arms because that's where um, that helps with the lymphatic system. So all of these phrases, take some time and look them up. 
take some time to Google them and say, oh, okay, each day was talking about that lymphatic drainage. Let me look that up. Okay. All right. The last and uh, the last one that I'll mention for today, because this video has gone on and on. The last one I'll mention for today is Yoni healing. And so one of the ways that you really um, can utilize the coconut oil is with yoni healing. Um, this is what is known as a yoni egg. And so this particular one is made out of jade. And for centuries, women have used this to heal and nurture their yoni. What am I talking about when I'm talking about my yoni? I'm talking about a woman's sacred place. And so what you would do is you would take this and you would um, add coconut oil to it. We call it a, a yoni a egg with the coconut on top. So you put some coconut oil on this and you would insert it the large end up into the yoni. The reason why this is helpful is because for a couple of reasons. If you look up the antibacterial properties of coconut oil, it helps to balance the flora inside of the yoni. And also, I highly encourage you women, please know that to put a chemical inside of there is not going to deal with the reason why you created the situation to begin with. The reason why you created the situation more than likely is that you feel some sort of anger, guilt, or shame, either about what you're doing with your yoni or about your mate. So it's important to do that internal work so that we um, we don't exacerbate uh, situations in our body. Because when we put chemicals in our body, the liver, the liver ain't checking for that. The liver gets all clogged up and when the liver is clogged up, you're naturally going to hold weight. It's, it's toxic. It's a toxic, toxic situation. It's terrible. So these are all different kinds of yoni eggs. And um, I like to think of a yoni egg as crystallized sunshine because it takes thousands of years to make these crystals. And then these crystals are carved into the shape of an egg. And um, a lot of them are blessed by shamans and um it's, it's really awesome to use these. I've taught a workshop on these myself to, uh, to bunches of women. And I know some women that this is their life's work to share about this. So I'll be sharing their information too. So all of these different crystals have different properties. This is one of my favorite ones. This is called Soda Light. This one is very good for creativity, for writers, and for also for releasing. So sisters, just know if you holding weight in your lower regions, like in your um in your belly, it's because you are putting everybody else first. You are not nurturing yourself, and you may have some guilt or frustration going on about your your mate or what you're doing with your yoni. So again, all of these are the benefits of coconut oil. <laughs> I am so happy to share that with you. I keep my um my yoni eggs in a um in a glass bowl and I have little guardian he's Ampu he's a little guardian of the way guardian of the uh, the opening so anyway saying all that to say um, utilize make sure you get um, extra virgin organic coconut oil and please if you like this video click like um, I am going to be sharing a lot more information about this so um, please be, uh, share it out, you know, to your friends and everything, because when we really come together and we put our body in its natural state, our body is designed to heal and be healthy and to be vibrant. So the more of this information that we can share that'll be helpful, the better off we'll be. So this is a long IDTV, but, um, man, I think it was worth it. So, um. Thank you for watching IDTV, and again, you know me. I'm on my bouncy ball like a two-year-old having a good time, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.